Hello everyone, this is James from Hybrid Hobby. What's up everyone? I'm going to do a nice little stream tonight from San Jose to San Francisco aboard Caltrain. And we're going to test this route out because this route was just released for Train Sim World 2020. And we'll be playing that tomorrow, or the next stream, basically. I really want to test it out on Train Simulator to see how it compares to Train Sim 2020. Okay, so what do you say let's get started here and let's get on with the street. It's been a while guys. Good to be back. So operating instructions for this career scenario say operating instructions. Load your passengers here at San Jose in anticipation of a 5.45 a.m. on-time departure, then await instructions from the conductor. Fair enough. Alright. So, I have the game optimized for the stream. First thing always, let's get these lights on. And uh, first things first, let's check out our train while oh, we're loading it up here. So, let's head out to the back. This is the back of the train. Today we are going to be running here from San Jose to San Francisco. This Actually, this morning on the Baby Bullet. Like a typical MP, uh, MP locomotive. On the pack here. And in the front is the cab car. Very good. Alright. So let's go ahead and load up. And we'll be on our way to San Francisco. So I hope everyone enjoys this stream, and a good hello, hello, by not hi, what's up guys, it's good to be back. Alright, all aboard, our first stop is Mountain View, let's do it guys. Alright, let's go ahead and pop up in cab, and again, today I really wanted to play this route because uh, I've been actually spending a lot of time lately this summer in the uh, Bay Area with my friend who lives up there and I uh, really wanted to test it out because I got Train Sim World 2020 Peninsula and I'm going to play that on the next stream and I wanted to compare the two streams together. I feel like that will give us some good stuff to talk about. So why don't you say, or why don't we say we depart here, let's go. We're on our way to Mountain View in about 10 miles, we need to be there by about 5.59 it looks like. And we are off. Got any wheel slip here? See you later, San Jose. A little, a little touchy, a little sensitive to the throttle there. And we're gonna hit that 40 mile per hour zone pretty quick in just a little over a quarter mile. So let's go ahead and get up to 20. Cruise on out of the station area here. And we are going to be running past Caltrain's maintenance yard too. So that's one of the things too that looks like is one of the high selling points of the um, of Train Sim 2020 Peninsula Corridor. So I'm interested to see how that looks on Train Sim World compared to how it looks on Train Simulator. There we go. The cab lights on inside. It's still early morning over here on the corridor. It is about 5.46 in the morning, so the sun isn't quite out yet. So, let's see. I It might be. It might be, Cheryl. You might be. I have to double check. I haven't played this game in quite a while. This is honestly the first time I've really played this game in months. And I thought I'd just turn it on and see if I remember all the controls. It's just like riding a bicycle, though. Oh, I should get that bell off. So the computer is going to take a nice little load here on the processor as we go past this uh, maintenance facility because it looks like we have several different trains out here with their headlights on as you can see over there. So that's always something to see how the performance of actually the machine I have running here can actually handle that. An i7 and I believe a 1060 uh, graphics card so it doesn't really have a problem but I've just noticed one thing about the headlight kind of flares and blooms on this game is it that that actually seems to take the biggest hit on performance on the computer but not bad alright so we have passed the 40 mile per hour speed limit sign we're gonna increase our speed just a tad bit because as you can see we have a 25 mile per hour zone coming up in about a half a mile so we don't want to get too 
comfortable at that 40 mile per hour zone. Probably kick her about 35 maybe and just let her coast on back down to 25. Ah, it feels good to be back though, guys. Alright, so we got that 25 mile per hour zone in less than a quarter mile, so we're going to start hitting some dynamics to slow it down just a bit. Let him bite in. Alright, we're going to be diverging. Oh, got a little wheel slip there, hit the dynamics a little hard, and we're speeding. I don't know that 25 hits so fast. That's weird. What the hell? Alright, so I guess I hit the brakes here. Slow us down a little bit. Alright, that's where we need to be right there. Got speed back up so we don't lose too much speed. Alright, control a little touchy on this. But I was reading, I don't know when this route came out, the controls were a little touchy. The brakes and stuff like that and the throttle. Alright, so we are picking back up our speed here. It looks like to 40. Let's get into the zone. Alright, there we are. Very good. Alright, let's kick it up here. Hit the throttles We're about 75. That'll give us a nice little boost of acceleration up to 40 miles per hour. Ah, Barnard says there was a freeware NYC Hudson that was recently released over the summer. It would be cool if you could do it on stream sometime. Barnard, that sounds like a cool idea. I'll definitely have to look into that. That'd be really cool to do. That'd be cool to run it on uh, the New York line that we have on that with the FL9 uh, New Haven locomotive. That'd be cool to run it on that line. I'll have to look into that. Uh, again, I haven't played Train Simulator. I've really been keeping up with the community all summer. It's just been busy, guys. I'm a, I'm a, I went back to school for another degree here in uh, Geographical Sciences, so I've just been studying like crazy for the last literally like 10, 11 months. So that's why you've kind of seen less of me. So I'm going to be getting back into Train Simulator, getting back into streaming, visiting you guys, hanging out, getting comfortable with running this train again. <laughs> Alright, so it looks like we have a 35 mile per hour zone coming up that transitions into a 79. So we're going to go and slow it down just a tad bit so we don't get any speeding marks off here. I would really like to get this train up to 79 miles per hour too. That would be awesome. I'm actually excited for that. Alright, so we are coming up to the Santa Clara station. We're not making a stop here. We're going to just pass it. Just going to coast by here. A little outside view for us to watch as we coast by. So this is our train for the day, as we can all see here. We have a typical Caltrain consist. So let me see if I can scoot over and get a little more better view there. That's us, guys. Off we go. Alright, so we're in the 35 mile per hour zone now. You can see that 35 speed limit kicked in way before we even reached the mark. That's very interesting. I wonder what that's all about. So maybe it has to do with... Well, I have to pay attention to the signal block that comes up right before the speed limit change. And maybe that's what we have to pay more attention to. Yes, yeah, sure, I know. I've been having some mic problems uh, this evening. I don't know what it's all about. I've been I was sitting here before I launched the stream, and I was having some problems with it as well, so I'm just going to try not to talk as loud. I might have to get a new mic, to be honest with you. I definitely apologize about that. I'll try to keep my voice down as much as I can and not really yell. Well, actually, well, let me try something real quick here. Let me just pause this game. You head over to OBS, and I'm just going to adjust the volume just a tad bit. And let me know, show if it sounds any better in the long run here. Let's go back to the cab of the train. Save just in case. Yes, okay. So we are basically clear to 79. We're going to go ahead and accelerate here. Show, sure, please let me know if that, uh, the voice sounds any better, because again, I know we've been having, or I've been having problems with the mic. Probably because my settings got all set back to default, and I haven't been able to. Uh, stream in such a long time that I had to literally start from ground zero adjusting my mic settings, so 
please let me know if that's any better. I will figure it out. This is my first stream back in quite a while, guys, so I'm excited to be here. There might be a little bit of bugs we have to work out, so that's all right. This is hybrid hobby. And we are back after a long departure. And some of the videos actually I released uh, a couple weeks ago, there was two of them that had to do with more geographic related things. Uh, there were just some projects I was working on in school, and I was just using uh, my YouTube to kind of just showcase them for uh, things like that. So you might see a mixture of things like that here and there. Uh, hold on one second. Let me see if I can adjust this mic a little bit better. I think we're maybe getting close, Cheryl says here. And pause the game. Okay, sure. I lowered it a little bit more significantly here. Uh, let me know how that goes. And we'll hope that actually comes out better. Because again, guys, it has been a while since I've streamed, so... And unfortunately, my OBS settings got all kicked back to default. Uh-oh, we're having the alerts that kick in. Uh, jump me off my feet there for a second. I was looking at the sound settings and the mic settings. <laughs> Alright, we are about six and a half miles outside of our first station stop of Mountain View. Gonna get an external view here of the train. And we're clear up to 79 miles per hour, guys, so we're gonna be getting her up to speed here. Let's do a little outside view. Coming up to 79 miles per hour, we're not quite there yet, but almost there. And one thing, we have not passed any grade crossings yet, so I haven't really got to do a grade crossing uh, horn blast. Kind of still waiting for that. As we look behind us, we see the East Bay, not the East Bay, but the to the east here with the Haywood Fault Mountains that run across Fremont, all the way to Oakland over there in the Bay Area. And we are en route to San Francisco currently here. It is currently 5.55 in the morning. Uh, in game time. And we are passing, looks like, Lawrence. We are pegging 79 miles per hour. Very good. Try to keep it at speed here as we are running the bullet for the morning here. Yeah, thank you, Cheryl. I'm glad that's better. Yeah, I, I don't know what happened. Like I said, my OBS settings were all uh, defaulted, so I was trying to get it back to where it used to be. And I should probably write down my settings somewhere so I know if that ever happens, I could just reference that and go back to it. But thank you. I'm glad it sounds better. If I do need to do anything, you know, adjustment-wise for the sound or anything, let me know. And I can, uh, or anything further, let me know, and I'll be more than happy to adjust it for your viewing pleasure. All right, yeah, so we're coasting along here. This is nice. This train's... Taking this speed, no problem. That's a beautiful picture right there. So we get a nice screenshot. Oh, but I had the the hut up. It's all right. All right, so a little bit under three and a half miles to Mountain View. We're getting ready to pass Sunnyvale. We are operating the Baby Bullet here, Morning Bullet, from San Jose to San Francisco. For those of you just joining the stream, welcome. This is Hybrid Hobby. Looks like our first grade crossing is coming up too. Oh, there's actually a grade crossing right there. Why they didn't tell us? Maybe I wasn't paying attention. Because <laughs> I do see somewhat of a grade crossing coming up in about a half a mile, it looks like. I wonder why I should see if there's a horn there. Or a little bit of a quarter mile. I'm not sure why I didn't have a horn for the other grade crossing if it wasn't even considered a grade crossing. Shows that look like a great crossing to me. Okay, so the X is the horn, I guess, so alright. Passing another train there. I didn't even signal the bell, I wasn't even paying it. So I guess what I'm seeing, if I'm correct here, when the horn 
is here on the actual map down here of the road, that's when you actually want to start blowing it, not when the grade crossing is, so. I've noticed that some of the later maps that came out from Train Simulator, there's little additions uh, to the, um, you know, the map down here on the heads-up display of basically things on the road and little things like that, like the horn marker. Uh, mods, yes, actually, sure, I do have some, a couple mods here and there. I've, um, I installed that, the, I think, what is the G-Force, or the G-Tracks, like, basically, uh, pack, I guess it's the passenger pack, like the daylight, uh, livery streamlined cars and the ATSF streamlined cars, things like that. Uh, other than that, I really haven't got into many other mods besides that. It looks like we're coming up on Mountain View, guys, in a little bit less than a mile. So I'm going to start slowing it down here. Oh, I don't know if this is not See, those dynamics bit hard. I didn't even barely tap the keyboard and they bit like at 11% there and caused us a little wheel slip. So we're going to be doing a commuter stop here, which is a very rapid, fast stop at the station platform of Mountain View. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Mountain View. Got a little bit of wheel slip there. Uh, this is finicky. Let's get those brakes on. And let the denied dynamics just get us right at the end of the station here. Uh, looks like we passed a little bit more than we should have, but let's go ahead and stop right there. I still got wheel step, damn it. All right, anyways. Uh, Mountain View, we're gonna go ahead and unload. So yeah, maybe I did pass the platform just a bit. <laughs> just a bit. Yeah, I believe the G-Track's lightweights, I believe so. Not, I didn't know they had heavyweights, that's cool, I'll have to look into that. Um, maybe, I, I guess they do. But yeah, so I believe it was the lightweights. Still at the station stop, and we are clear. Next stop, Palo Alto. Palo Alto's next stop. All right, here we go. Oh, you see the sky change right there? That was crazy. What the hell happened? Ah, the Berkshire CNO reskin. I'll have to check that out. Let's get her up to the speed, guys. We have about six miles, a little under six miles to Palo Alto. We essentially have a high ball to Palo Alto, so let's go ahead and get rolling. Looks like we're due in time at 6.06 a.m. Be careful with this here. I don't want to cause too much wheel slip accelerating out of the station. Looks like we can give her a little more throttle here. There she goes. Let's see if we can get this baby up to 100% throttle right here. Alright, we're off to Palo Alto, guys. Let's get back in the front of the train here. See, one thing I don't like about actually running a cab car compared to actually running a locomotive is uh, you can't really get a feel for the sound, you know, of the, of the engine roaring. You kind of like got to go back here to really hear that, you know what I mean? So, I mean, it's cool to obviously experience simulation of rail operations, but to really experience locomotives and power, you got to be in the cab. All right, so we are off here in this early morning adventure in the Bay Area on Train Simulator. I don't think the Berkshires is TS Pro. I don't think it is. Uh, it might be, but I don't think it is. There's the alerta. Right, we're first throttle guys trying to get it up to speed here. Looks like that's a great crossing in front of us. 
You know what it is? Is maybe these grade crossings are quiet. That's why you don't have to blow your horn. That makes a hell of a lot more sense. They're probably quiet zones, like in Palo Alto and stuff like that, and the Stanford area up there on the Silicon Valley. I'll have to look into that, because that's actually interesting now, that actually some of the grade crossings want you to blow your horn at it, some of it doesn't. It doesn't even show them and register them as grade crossings. So that's probably what it is. They're probably quiet zones. So we are almost to speed limit here, track speed, track speed is 79, we're currently at 69 miles per hour. And we're coming up on that grade crossing here in less than a half a mile. So we're going to go ahead and get in grade crossing mode. There's something in front of us there. There's a sign. And we're almost at track speed. Alright. Let's get back in the cab here. The great crossing in front of us. Alright guys, we're on our way. This is nice. The line is all ours here this morning too. I haven't had really any problems with any traffic or signals. It shows the difficulty for the scenario being level 4. So this is an actual career scenario we're doing right now. This is not a free run. So I'm curious to see if we actually encounter any traffic along the way or any issues. And there's an oncoming train here. Yes, this uh, this route is on uh, the west coast. It's the San Francisco Peninsula, running from basically essentially San Jose to San Francisco. With the add-on for it was to Gilroy. So yes, Northern California. Actually, like I was saying, he's been spending some time with it the last couple of weeks. I'm working on a video too for the channel for some cool stuff I was working on up north. So you guys are going to see that. Some I got a Caltrain video coming too, guys. Get ready for that. So I'm excited to get back to YouTube, get back to you guys. That's strange though, right? Because look, see, coming up right now in about a quarter mile, look at that, uh, there's a horn on the track map. So let's see exactly where the whistle sign is. Oh, uh, there it is. So yeah, there's a whistle sign. That makes sense. Alright, so we got Palo Alto guys in less than a mile here. We're going to start slowing down. I'm not going to do some dynamics because the last time we used dynamics, it looks like we got a little bit of wheel slip. So we're just going to uh, brakes on and just kind of slowly creep into the station. Come up less than half a mile here. Yeah, there is whistle balls next. That's what I'm saying. But some of the creek crossings we passed, there were no whistle balls. That's why I was kind of scratching my head. All right, guys, this is Palo Alto. Ah, right on time. Very nice. Ah, let's slow it down as she comes in. Yeah, I like the way this train stops without the dynamics. It stops a little bit more uh, naturally. Those dynamics didn't feel right. Maybe it's just me being a little rusty. Hello. Let's go to the outside view here, see so if we can go a little closer. As we make the station stop. Dear, for a bird, we're flying into the station. Alright, let's come to a stop. And open the doors, and ladies and gentlemen, this is Palo Alto. Alright. Hey, Zay Carson, what's happening? Welcome to Hybrid Hobby! Welcome back to the return of Hybrid. 
Return of the Community, Return of Train Simulator Live. It's been quite a while. I think it's been about 10 or 11 months since I've actually done a live train simulator video. So what's up? Good to have you here. Uh, we're doing basically a comparison of the train simulator, uh, the Caltrain Corridor, the San Francisco Corridor here, the Peninsula. So we're going to be basically doing this tonight on Train Simulator, and then the next stream we're going to be doing Train Sim World 2020's version of the Peninsula Corridor. All right, conductor says doors are clear. His Dell is next. All aboard. Let's go. Oh, that throttle's very, very, very sensitive. All right, let's get her going, guys. Looks like we got greens all the way to, into Hillsdale. We should be there in about 10 miles, under 10 miles. Uh, estimated time of arrival looks like about 6.18 a.m. Let's get this baby on the road. All right. I really, really uh, like Caltrain. It really holds a special place in my heart. Like I said, I've been riding it the last couple of weeks uh, up in the Bay Area, so this is cool to actually play it on Train Simulator because I don't know, just I, I've been wa I wanted to go up there and ride it and check it out for so long and I finally went up there that coming back here and actually playing it, that's pretty cool. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and get her into full throttle here. Zay Carson, do you remember me? Of course I remember you, Zay. I remember all the hybrid hobbyists. Absolutely. Welcome back. I mean, welcome, man. This is awesome. It's good to be back with the community here still. I know I've been kind of MIA. Look, here's a great crossing. I didn't see a whistle sign. Or maybe I missed it because I was doing all the other silly views. Alright, alright. So let's get her going. Oh, Bidemont says, You just remembered the other Burke reskins, the Pierre Marquette and an Ear Berkshire on RWA as well. Nice, very cool. Oh, I like when they have web variants. That's that's awesome. That's one of my favorite things about some of the DLCs and stuff of the train simulator is the web uh, versions of the locomotives. I have a lot of DLC actually, guys, too, that I plan on showing and bringing to you guys. I've just been so damn busy with school and life and work that I haven't been able to play at all. So there's going to be a lot of videos and live streams coming out in the next couple of weeks. So just be, uh, be prepared. I'm excited. I hope you are too. Uh, Zay Carson says TSW has Caltrain and UP DLC. Yes, they do. Uh, it's recent, just came out, and uh, it's literally the exact same route. So I'm kind of excited to see that and play that because it should be a whole different experience with the Train Sim World physics and graphics and everything, you know what I mean? So that should be cool. Grade crossing coming up. All right. All right, guys. So our next stop is Hillsdale. We are about a little bit under 70 miles per hour, just shy of 70 miles per hour. Uh, track speed is 79, so we're going to try to get up. So see, there's another grade crossing. I didn't see a whistle ball. All right, let's watch it. There's a whistle ball for this one. That's strange. So basically from here on out, I will not blow my whistle at a grade crossing that does not have a whistle board. Because I think that's how it's supposed to be. Maybe they just don't mark them as quiet zones. Maybe they just don't put a board, you know? That would make sense. But I'll have to research Caltrain's operating protocols to see if that is actually indeed what the case may be. Because as we can see, coming up here in about a mile and a mile and a half, there are two whistle stops on our uh, map there at the bottom, a track map. Alright. So let's get situated for the ride into Hillsdale here, guys. We're going to be at track speed now. 
I'm gonna lower off throttle down from 100%. Now, one thing I did really get a kick uh, about Caltrain riding it, guys, in the last couple weeks and really get to experience it is Caltrain really holds the speed uh, at 79 miles per hour. You know, it just keeps keeps it there for a while. You know, I'm from the Los Angeles, Southern California area. That's where I'm broadcasting from. That's where I live and where I've grown up and everything. And uh, down here we have Metrolink. Uh, hold on, let me stop that right. Uh, dispatch to Caltrain 305. I'm a very late running Union Pacific Mission Bay Harbor, trying to make it to South San Francisco Yard before the rush. You can anticipate possible restricting signals from Hillsdale North. Dispatch out. All right, 10-4 dispatch. All right, guys, so there is the part of the scenario I was wondering about, and it is actually here. And, uh, yeah, so it sounds like we're going to have to pay attention to some signals. But it doesn't look like we have a grade crossing coming up as well. Yeah, see, okay. Those were quiet zones. Those are whistle board. So that, I mean, see, there's no whistleboard for this grade crossing. And there's a whistleboard right here for the next grade crossing. Boom. Let's get her back up to speed here. Track speed 79. Let's get her going. Digital railroading. The guys who made MSDE, the NH is going to become Haven for well, US Steam fans soon. We're going to want a Pensy soon. Nice. Nice. Very cool. Oh, awesome. Freeway is the way to be. That's cool. Very good. So we are at track speed, guys. This is nice. Look at this. We are rolling through the Bay Area here on this beautiful morning at 6.15. Track speed. Let's get it back up to speed a little bit. Actually, we dropped a couple miles there. So a nice little side view of the train here blasting through the Bay Area. Very nice. It's a nice concert. It's pretty long. Get back here. Alright, so we're about three and a quarter out of Hillsdale, guys. Make a nice speed this morning. Looks like Redwood City. I think that was Redwood City. <laughs> or San Carlos, maybe. That was San Carlos, actually. I don't know, it was one of them. Oh, oh, I was paying attention to the station, not the speed. I think that was San Carlos Station. That's what actually was boarding uh, the train, guys, um, the last couple of weeks when I was up north here riding Caltrain, right there in San Carlos. What you gonna believe that was? All right, and uh, Hillsdale at 6.17 ETA, about two miles out. We yeah, haven't had a great crossing to worry about quite yet. So there's a 50 mile, about, or about 48 mile stretch between San Jose and San Francisco. That's the length and duration of our run this evening. And sound our bell for cautious purposes as we go through the station here. I think that's a... Uh, Alright. So here's just coming up at about a mile and a half. Make sure we get there on time, keep our schedule up. Yes, sure. Actually, actually, yes. They, they got it pretty down. This is actually how the route looks and feels. Um, like I was saying before, I was reading what the conductor was uh, mentioned to us, that or the dispatch mes message, that here down in Southern California, Metrolink shares the rails with Amtrak, and it shares the rails with um, heavy BNSF traffic and some Union Pacific trains as well. And the, it never really gets to get up to speed and stay there for continuous minutes like Caltrain here. Uh, one thing I did notice about Caltrain is it gets to stay up at speed and it keeps that speed for a while. So it generally feels like you're on a high speed train. It's pretty cool. It's really cool. All right, guys, we have Hillsdale coming in. And yes, uh, yes, it definitely looks a lot like, yeah, you nailed it. You nailed it. It does look a lot about the, kind of the north uh, San Diego County area. 
is what the Bay Area kind of looks like. It's very similar, very similar vibe. Not quite the same, but it is a very similar vibe. But I'm excited to play Train Sim World 2020 with this route and see how different it is compared to this. So that's I'm kind of excited for that because it's going to be essentially the same route like we're playing right now, but the graphics are going to be like 50 times better. So that'll be cool to see. Now we're going to be rolling in here to the station. This is Hillsdale. Here's to everybody. So that was very touchy on this train. Rookie engineer here, don't mind me pulling into the platform, everybody. We'll make it there, just be patient. Alright. Oh, that person, that last car screwed. So, let's go ahead and uh, exit the train. Alright guys, we are here in uh, Hillsdale. We're going to be making a quick station stop and we are going to be continuing on into San Francisco. I can see here uh, South San Francisco in front of us. That hill kind of indicates that. Actually, I was in a small plane, guys, a few weeks back when I was up north with my friend and we flew over that hill. I was only about 1,500 feet in elevation and uh, my god, that little plane felt like it was going to fall to the sky with the way the wind turbulence was over that hill right there. So. That's a whole other video and experience coming, guys. I've been getting into that lately, too, so be prepared for that. All right, all aboard and clear. Millbrae is next. Let's go ahead and get rolling. Oh, I forgot to actually activate the brake in the station here. All right, so we have a grade crossing coming up, too, in a, bit, a little bit over a quarter mile. I don't want to cause any wheel slip there. I keep really, uh, forgetting how long our train is today. I didn't realize... Uh, that we have like six cars or seven cars on it. I keep thinking we're just a normal commuter train. Cheryl says, I live in North Florida, but I've been down to South Florida Rail Corridor in Miami to West Palm Beach. has a large amount of inaccurate sections. Interesting. I, I read that on the reviews for Steam. Um, I haven't played West Palm Beach yet, but I, because I got so much other routes I've been trying to play and actually get to experience them. I'm, you know, that's kind of last on my list. Not last time, but it's down. It's it's just I got so many more I'm trying to do that I bought so far. But uh, one of the things I read about that on Steam was a lot of the inaccuracies with that route. That's very interesting. That's cool though. Are you guys uh, getting ready for that hurricane down there right now, show? You guys, how, you, how, I hope you guys stay safe with that. Sounds not like a fun thing to really be experiencing right now. Alright, we are coming up on a great crossing here as we accelerate here into Millbury, which is about six and a quarter out right now. Let's go back in cab. Alright, we're at 100% throttle here, trying to get to track speed, guys. Our ETA in the middle bay is about 6.26 a.m. and currently about 6.20. Uh, Bynot says, being from San Diego, the Pacific Surf Line around has some line side inaccuracies too. Especially now since there's been a lot of changes in real life with the total with the new trolley extension in particular. Yes, yes, I agree with that. There are a lot of cool, you know, actual accuracies, but yes, now at this point, it does probably need to be a little updated. Um, it would be really, really cool to see Train Sim World bring us the um, uh, Pacific Surfrunner route to that their platform. That'd be awesome. Damn, Cheryl. Well, my, my thoughts and prayers are definitely out with you and your family for that. That sounds, uh, sounds like a mess. Alright, guys, we're cruising. But yeah, it'd be really cool to see the Pacific Surf Rider be brought to life uh, on Train Sim World. Alright guys, we've got a great crossing coming up here as we're going to be heading into San Mateo. Oh. <laughs> I was taking a drink of coffee. I didn't see that the great crossing came up so fast. But I guess I realized we're actually going pretty fast. Uh, we're going to be coming through the downtown San Mateo section right area right now, heading through the station. 
And we got two great crossings, looks like, coming up right here in the next half a mile and quarter mile. So we'll go ahead and sound our horn here pretty soon. And we are now setting our horn. So see now there's another great crossing right after this, there was no indication to blow our horn, so we're just gonna I guess put a bell instead. Make it seem a little bit more, you know safe, I guess. <laughs> I don't like the idea of just rolling through oh I'm not even paying attention to our speed. I don't like the idea of just rolling through a great cross like with no you know protection or noise or anything like that. It's I mean I think a bell is at least they they use that bell in quiet zones as far as I know. I live by a couple of quiet zones here. As well as yeah. I, you know, so for the most part, it seems like most of the routes on Train Sim World have been pretty legit so far. As far I mean, I'm not, I'm not from the East Coast or any of the areas where the routes are from, and I haven't experienced the, the corridor one here yet, the Peninsula one. That's going to be uh, on a debut with you guys. So hopefully, maybe if they do a corridor or a Pacific Surf Line or not, it is pretty, pretty well put together, legit. Yes, yes, that would be awesome. I would definitely like to see some more, some more American, you know, mainline freight on Train Sim World because they're definitely lacking that. I mean, I know we got Sandpatch. That's, I think, really all the mainline freight we get with Train Sim World because, I mean, the freight that uh, was on the, the New York line, that CSX, what is it, the Amtrak, the... New Haven kind of area one, the Northeast Corridor, that was just kind of almost like branch kind of like, you know, local stuff. It wasn't really mainline freight. So that would be cool to get Moffitt to get some actual, you know, Western railroading. I feel like it's a very big part of rail fans and, uh, you know, the love of railroading is Western United States mainline freight. I and mean, that's kind of essentially what I grew up with watching videos of Rio Grande and Santa Fe, TSF, and stuff like that, and that's what really captivated for me. But again, I was always, I grew up on the West Coast, so I was around that, more so the East Coast Railroads. But yeah, it would definitely be cool to see that. So we got nobody coming up here, actually, oh shit, in less than a half a mile, and I was sitting here chatting and speeding, so I'm going to go ahead and adjust our speeds, and we can come into the station here. I think we got a yellow too. Flashing yellow. I got that train in front of us they were talking about. Alright, so let's go ahead and get to a stop here. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, this is Milbray. the doors here. Alright guys, how are you liking the route so far? Alright, so we're gonna go ahead and load up passengers here. Nice Cheryl, nice. I definitely have been watching uh, a lot of rail fanning videos from Florida during the summer here too. It's awesome scenery down there. I've, I've really wanted uh, a Southern Pacific steam era route of like the heyday with gs4s and and cab forwards and stuff like that and kind of like the transition would be cool like the 50s a 50 southern pacific route in either los angeles or you know central coast of say, of california like i said with gs4s and f9s and the eights and all that cool southern pacific kind of transition period power you know in the, in the 50s when we were transitioning from steam to diesel that would be one of the most ultimate routes, and I've been just wishing for that forever with Train Simulator. And I know the locomotives are all there, so I know it can be done. 
We'll see. All right, conductor says we are clear at Mulberry. Our next stop is San Francisco, and it's also the last. All right, ladies and gentlemen, all aboard. We are going to be highballing here, or actually just, I don't know, just cruising into San Francisco. We'll see, because I think we have a train we're actually right behind. I will soon find out about that, my friends. Let's see. Go into our outside view of our train here. Let's see as our train departs at Millbury Station. Full view right here. I don't want to cause too much wheel slip as she powers out. Nice, Cheryl. Nice. Because that would be like the ultimate. That's been my dream route for either Train Simulator or Train Sim World since I started playing. And you know, the actual true 100% recreation. That would be awesome. Alright guys, we're accelerating. I feel like we can push it to full throttle here slowly. And I'm going to jump in cab because I just want to take a quick look at the signal coming up because I know when we were pulling to the station we were getting a flashing yellow. Alright, it looks like we got a green so we're good there. I was a little worried about that. Oh man, by now, that would be awesome. There you go, some thinking. A 50s route from LA to Bakersfield would be oh, would be cool. Throw in some PA, some MT4s, and maybe some daylight colored alcohol PAs, it would be perfect. Heck yeah, it would be perfect. That sounds awesome. Daylight PAs. That, this game is missing that. You're getting chills right now. That's awesome. What a great suggestion. We don't have PAs on Train Simulator. On Train Sim World. I love PAs and FAs. Alco Power rocks. I have uh, a couple of FA1s, uh, some Bachman FA1s with DCC and sound. That I painted in a custom livery, and I freaking love those little guys. They say just grunt along. Awesome locomotives. I love Alcos. Yeah, Train Simulator is missing that. You're right. Definitely, show. I definitely second that as well. Daylight paint scheme is probably hands down one of the best paint schemes of all locomotives, of any locomotive. Now, is, is, is it correct if I'm wrong, but are there, were there PAs or Alco FAs painted in seaboards, uh, that purple livery, the purple and silver? If I can remember correctly, I thought there was. Again, correct me if I'm wrong. Alright, so we got a 65 mile per hour zone coming up here. Go ahead and adjust our speed coming into that. Ah, got it, got it. Yeah, Al Alco FA1s are pretty sweet too. I like them as a, the shorter wheelbase, obviously smaller trucks, really cool branch line power. That's kind of what I painted my customer. I customized my HO scale ones for. I painted them up. I think they were, uh, I don't remember what they were before I painted them, but exactly what I was going for. Alright, so we're going to be rounding the curve here. Looks like we're heading into the South San Francisco area. And we got a grade crossing coming up. Oh, we started speeding on that curve. Pay attention to that. miles outside of San Francisco. Oh, that's what I'm thinking about. There you go. Okay, okay, sure. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I, I always like that paint scheme too. That's a cool, that's cool, it's unique. You don't really see too many locomotives painted purple. Well, that, that shade of purple at least. I've seen some cool videos on YouTube of some guys with some actual nice full-on uh, passenger trains with that livery. Pretty nice looking. 
Uh, so our speed limit's up to 79 again, track speed 79. So we're going to be pushing the speed limit up. Or pushing the throttle up here to get up to speed limit. And looks like we got over to speed back down to 70 in about a mile and a half. Yeah, that would be cool. It would be cool if they had different maps and, and you could actually change the era of the maps and like say you could do Cajon Pass and they had a bunch of, you know, and if they released the Alpha PA, uh, if they, you know, released that and released era specific kind of choices you could do for the different maps, it'd be cool. That would be awesome to run some ATSF uh, Alcos in that paint scheme on Cajon Pass with the a super chief or something. That'd be awesome. Yeah, that would be cool. I always wanted to do the surf line too with Sandy Agins in the ATSF war bonnet scheme. You know what I mean? With some F7s or something. So that's that's what I'm saying. It'd be cool if like say you could take the Pacific Surf Line route and it was just an option to switch it to, you know, nineteen fifties time era or something like that. It's essentially the same map, just with different assets. I mean, I could totally see it being done. I mean, you just... A little bit of work, you know, but I can see it being done. Alright, so I think we reduced down to 70 for this curve right here. It's really bouncing right back up to 79. It looks like as soon as we kind of straighten out again. In less than a mile and a half. I know exactly where we're coming up to. Look at this. I remember flying over this in a little small airplane and seeing this section right here. Uh, I'll show you another section too where we come up to. It was really cool to see. I'll have to post some of the pictures of this route from the air. And I was uh, I was in a flight, like I said, a little small aircraft doing some research work for a project at school in the Bay Area. It was pretty cool. But seeing the signal right here, the stretch of track uh, from about 1,500 feet up was a trip with this, and they go into four tracks right here. It was pretty cool. Uh, so let's throttle back up, guys. But we do have a 65 mile per hour track speed limit coming up in about a mile and a half, or a little mile and a half. Yeah, see, exactly. If you could switch, exactly, West Palm Beach back to the 50s, get to see what airlines, medium freights, exactly. That would be awesome. That's what I'm talking about. I mean, to, you know, with that being said, I, I don't know that there would be less development even needed. If we could just essentially go back to the same map and just change the assets up, you, you know, the, the geography of the land really hasn't changed much, and I'm sure a lot of people would be okay with getting a a route and you can actually change the era if it was just a slight you know it might not be completely accurate 100 percent but i think people would still get a kick out of it and appreciate the fact that you could at least do it so if you're watching this or if any train sim devs ever go on my youtube and watch that i think that would be a cool thing to incorporate oh and i see it guys i see the houses here as we're leading into the san francisco city limits you can see those small houses above the hills over there. There's all the smaller San Francisco style homes that are attached to each other. They're not attached to each other in this game though, that's strange. It's Bay Shore, passing Bay Shore. And this is the tunnel, guys. We're gonna go to the Bay Shore tunnel. Go ahead and get inside the cab. This is a cool, cool tunnel to go in in real life too. As soon as you go in, the pressure immediately changes, and your your ears fill up and pop. It's pretty it's pretty gnarly. All right, so we're gonna accelerate back up to full track speed. Someone made a backdated version of Sherman Hill. It looks pretty cool, but I haven't been able to get it because it requires stuff from a donation or about. I don't have PayPal to pay for it. Ah, interesting. Interesting. Yeah, I haven't really looked into any of the donation where routes. Where would you find those at, actually? Oh, nice. FEF3s and Big Boys. Very nice. Uh, I wish they actually made an updated version of the Big Boy. Now with 4014 running and everything. That'd be pretty cool. 
Alright, so we're coming into our second tunnel. This one's definitely shorter than the first tunnel. Not as significant as the first one. And guys, we're up a little bit into four miles away from San Francisco. We're almost there. Making great time here. Our ETA is going to be about 6.44 a.m. It is now 6.37. We're scheduled to drive about three and a half miles. And we had full throttle. Track speed is going to be reduced to about 75 miles per hour in a little bit over a mile. I'm going to pass to the 22nd Singu Street Track Station. And then we'll be heading into downtown San Francisco. Oh, that's a nice little grade right there. Alright, so it looks like we have a reduction in speed down to 40 miles per hour coming very soon. We're gonna get prepared right now. That's 75 zone first. It's hard to set this thing at zero throttle sometimes. Alright, so we're going to coast on in into the San Francisco area, a little bit about two miles out. Let's start getting that speed reduction going. Got a 40 mile per hour track speed coming up at about less than a mile. Nice, nice to hear they're working on a new big boy, very nice. We're using by dynamic for this whole braking purpose right here. Passing 22nd Street, guys. I'm about to hit dynamic at 100%. Less than a quarter out. We got to drop off. We got 20 miles per hour. Oh, shit. I absolutely hit emergency. That was a complete accident. Oh, shit. I'm glad I didn't stop the train altogether. <laughs> Shit, I didn't know you could hit emergency when you uh, hit dynamics on 100%. Interesting. I guess any application brake sitting at 100% is considered emergency though. Alright, here. And we got another whistle board. Track speed down to 25. And no more dynamics for the approach into the city area here. Alright guys, we are approaching downtown San Francisco. And we're making the curve into the city. Oh, the skyline severely lacking. Where's the Salesforce Tower? Alright, we got a 10 mile per hour zone coming up here. Go ahead and drop our throttle down. There we go. Don't drop it too down though. Don't stall the train there, hybrid. Alright, we are coming into downtown San Francisco, guys. This is downtown San Francisco. Around the curve into the station here. Oh. Zoom out a little bit there. Yeah, let's see here. Adjust the view for us. See, waltz on in. Damn, this throttle is so hard to zero out on this cab car. And we're going to be heading right into track six right there. Wow, what a trip. I was just here, guys, a few days ago, a few nights ago. So weird to see it on a video game or a, a computer program. Alright, we are heading into the Caltrain station. Let's get a nice little seat inside to see what it's like. This is exactly what it looks like. Wow, what a trip. I like the Caltrain colored seats too. Very nice. And this is downtown San Francisco. It's a beautiful morning, guys. It's 641. We're just going to arrive at 6.44, so we're definitely early here. 
yes, the train definitely does creep, creep along this slow <laughs> when it heads into the Caltrain station. All right, we're going to stand at the platform here. Expecting our train here with morning commuters. Sorry for the jittery controls there. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is San Francisco. Let's bring her home, guys. We get the whole train on the platform. Let him get an inside view here so we don't run into the glass. <laughs> All right. Ladies and gentlemen, this is San Francisco. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that was awesome. That was awesome. That was a nice little run. This is cool. This is cool. It's good to be back. Uh, we are here in downtown San Francisco aboard Caltrain. We just arrived here. Uh, we're a few minutes early. That was awesome, guys. That was cool. Let's see. Let's go to the front of the train. Oh, guys, disappeared. Wow, this is exactly what the station looks like. Again, I was just here a few days ago, guys. Oh, wow, crazy, crazy. Let's get rid of that. See if we can take a couple screenshots here. Yeah, it's a cool route. It's a really cool route. I think you'll enjoy it. I like it's one of my favorite routes on this game. If you like West Palm Beach, and I think if you know if you like the Surfliner route, you'll definitely like this game as or this route as well. All right, well done. You have brought Caltrain 305 into San Francisco in good time. Take a break. Have some coffee on this crisp morning. Scenario complete, guys. We are done. That was awesome. That was a nice little run. That was cool. Uh, like I said, it's definitely been a while since I've played Train Simulator and actually streamed with you guys, so it was really cool being back and doing that. Uh, get to hanging out with you guys here. I really wanted to actually demonstrate and show you guys some Caltrain Because again, I was just actually got back from a couple weeks up in the Bay Area and also uh, That we're going to play Train Sim World 2020's version of the Caltrain Peninsula Corridor route in the next stream. So it's gonna be cool to compare the difference here by not Cheryl remember all the stuff we saw today and the experiences, the graphics, the way the brakes acted, the physics, uh, the views from inside the cab, inside the cars, outside, the way the sky looks, the buildings. Wow, it was crazy. This is exactly how it looks in San Francisco at this station right here. So I'm actually really excited to see Train Sim World's version of this and just see how much of a step above this it is because this is actually pretty legit and pretty close. But we'll see, right? That's what this is all about. Well, again, thank you for being a part of Hybrid Hobby. I bid you farewell. I will see you on the next stream. You guys, thank you for everything. I am back now. I'll be doing these streams for the next couple of weeks here. Hopefully, we're going to have some fun here on Hybrid Hobby. Bye not. Cheryl Starworth, thank you for being part of Hybrid Nation. I will catch you guys later. Have a great night. Take care, guys.